Right, hello and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be having a look at uh, spawn per unit and how we can extend that to do something like this where we have alternating blueprints. Um, we've covered spawn per unit before on this channel talking about sword trails um, but here we're going to kind of have a look at how to do this. So um, if you've not used spawn per unit before uh, what it does is you specify a distance uh, for how far your emitter has traveled and then it will spawn particles at kind of like a regular interval uh, along that. Um, but to get it to, to alternate textures and to alternate the uh, the offsets, that's what we're going to be having a look at today. So let's start with a, let's get rid of this. Uh, let's just start with a brand new system. Now because this system, uh, I'll start from an empty uh, NS class SPU offset, something like that. Um, and all we're going to do here is, in the emitter update, we're going to use the spawn per unit module. Uh, and the spacing, this is how far um, between our particles we're going to have. So I'm going to use something like, you know, let's start with 200 uh, and we can carry on with that. Uh, there's uh, parameters here for thresholds and tolerances. And um, if you want to have not spawn on very large movements, that's what that, that one does. Uh, and if you don't want to spawn on very small movements, that's what that one does. Uh, and we can also do spawn probability and what have you. Um, okay. There we are. As we can see, as we move the emitter around, we get particles spawning. Um, in this case, it's every, whatever it was, 200 units. I might just lower that down. Every 50 units, something like that. Uh, and you can see how this is really useful for creating trails behind things. Uh, I've got grid snap on, so that's why it's a little bit snappy. There we go. Um, so very common uses for attaching things. Uh, car exhausts. Cars can move at different speeds. You want the uh, sort of exhaust to be consistent. That kind of thing. Um, but what we're getting here now is a um, a uniform particle. It's always the same. And what I want to do is create some way of creating variation from particle to particle. Um, and actually it's pretty easy. So uh, if I apply a debug material, uh, debug float, uh, this is just taking a particle parameter uh, and debugging it. It's a nice way to have a look at values that are happening in your system. Uh, and what I'm going to do is in particle spawn, if I go to a dynamic material parameter, I'm going to set that value. Uh, every particle spawns with a value um, and so if I do a float from int uh, make a float from int and the int I'm going to use, the integer uh, is going to be the particle id attribute and so particles.unique id uh, that's going to be a, a unique value per particle well, I've used this before um, and what we get now if we look is every particle spawning uh, we get a new number um, this is cool. This gives us uh, a way of sort of discerning from one particle to the next, uh, but we don't want it just to be a number that goes up. Instead, we're going to use the modulo function. So if I just cut that out and do a modulo float, paste it back into A. Um, what modulo does, it gives us the remainder uh, once it's been divided by the B input. So if I do modulo of one, everything's going to be zero. There's no remainder. These were all whole numbers. But if I do modulo of two, what we should get now is one zero one zero one zero. So um, modulo mathematical function. Um, if we do three mod three, that's three divided by three. What's the leftovers? Well, there's nothing leftovers. If we do four mod three, well, the remainder when you've taken away the three is one. Um, hopefully that makes sense. So seven mod three would also be one because three twice is six, six taken away from seven is one, one's your remainder. Um, and so effectively it just allows us to um, to count, count one, two, three, one, two, three, or in this case it's zero, one, two, zero, one, two, uh, and then reset. And so it's the amount left over. Um, and obviously as soon as we get to three, well then there's zero left over because we've got another full division. Um, very useful function. Um, so if you wanted to alternate between four different textures, uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, you could do that. You just have to use modulo, modulo four. So in our case, we just want modulo two, uh, and it's just gonna give us value zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. Cool. How are we gonna use this? Well, I've made a material, 
um, it's called boot print uh, within the material I've just taken a very simple texture uh, and I'm just using that value um, so I have my UVs here I have the UVs which have been flipped on X uh, and I'm just lurping between them so if I get a value of 0 here I'm going to have the boot or uh, the left hand boot uh, and if I do a value of 1 I'm going to get the right hand boot um, obviously nothing else makes any sense values of 0 0.5, 0 0.2 um, we're never going to want to use those but as long as we only ever put in 1 or 0 we can quickly flip the UVs of our uh, of our model of our sprites so if I do that um, if I assign that, this is should be already working. Mm -mm. There we go. Now our boot is alternating between left and right. Um, we want to align this, so I'm going to do a custom alignment where the boot is aligned with the x-axis of our emitter. So in our sprite renderer, we want alignment to be set to custom, and I'm going to set facing to custom as well, so custom facing vector. So we're not going to use the default camera facing particle we want this to be aligned uh, and the way we do that is we set them here uh, and what that does is it looks in the bindings so everything's set by default custom alignment custom facing vector uh, sprite facing vector here sprite facing sprite alignment sprite alignment uh, and so in particle spawn I can do set new or existing particle sprite alignment and facing particle sprite facing um, and I'm going to see the alignment is going to be to the system X so whichever way we rotate and move our system around it's always going to align with that um, so in this case the system would have to be attached to the the thing that's moving around leaving these boot prints uh, and the facing well these are aligned with the floor so they always want to face upwards uh, and what we should find now is they are indeed facing along the x-axis of our emitter if I rotate this you can see their x-axis uh, and they are Z aligned so they are flat to the world. Okay, a uh, couple of last things. Um, the offsets. Well, we want the alternating footprints to move left and right. Um, and the way we're going to do that is by setting a position. So set new existing directly. Uh, I'm going to use a uh, particle position. Part position. And what I'm going to do is just going to add an offset. So we've got the particle position, and I'm just going to add a vector to that so the position we're adding to is the particle position so effectively we're uh, currently doing nothing we're adding nothing to the thing so whatever position we had this allows us to then use something like a spawn volume or whatever earlier on um, so we're taking whatever the position that it, it has generated for us and I'm going to add an offset now if I add let's say uh, 50 in Y what we should see is they're now 50 units in oh let's not use that use 15x there we go they've now been offset 50 units that way and all we're going to do is we're going to use that alternator value to change the offset so um, if I do vector times float and let's do 25 uh, and let's just do that as 1 and 25 there um, that should then give us the same idea it's offset in the uh, x-axis let's open that up uh, uh, uh. Uh, but we don't want it to always be 25 we're going to use the um, alternator so 25 times the alternator oh I haven't saved it out as a value that's probably useful um, so this value here this um, modulo value that we looked at earlier um, I just called it alternator here it's loaded into the uh, into the material but actually I want that as a whole value so again I'm going to use a set new and existing in here and I'm going to create a brand new float and just paste that back in so the same as before get the particle ID convert it into a float from an int then modulo that float by 2 and that gives me a parameter I'm going to call alternator and then in the material parameter I'm just going to use that value just a way of saving it to be used in multiple places so same logic um, now that I've saved it I can use it here particle alternator um, and what we'll get is sort of the right result firstly it's backwards the uh, the u and the v that's not a problem 
uh, I can just use a negative value in here and now the boot prints are correct um, but they're centered on the particle um, if I'm thinking about how this would be used it probably would be attached to the center of the character that's moving around and we're going to want the footprints to be offset both positively and negatively um, but that's probably quite an easy thing to do we've already got values that go from 0 and 1 we're just going to do a little bit of math uh, and convert that into uh, minus 1 and 1 um, so there is a input for that scale and bias float uh, the float we're going to scale and bias is the alternator the scale well if, if we're at 0 to 1 we need to multiply that by 2 to get now 0 to 2 is our range but from 0 to 2 we want to get minus 1 to 1 so we're going to subtract 1 and we'll, that will then sort of unpack our values um, very common thing to do and there we are now we have our footprints left and right as we rotate and move forwards uh, oh there's a problem what's the problem well the offset that we're applying here this vector is in world space um, so we're applying an offset of 25 units um, alternating between positive and minus 25 uh, but we're always adding it in the x-axis so instead of using the x-axis here I'm going to use the system y axis system y and so now as I move this around it's always using this green axis Oh, got a problem. Our values have flipped. So the value here just wants to be positive. And there we are. Now as this moves around, we're always spawning our offsets local to the system. And we're alternating between a left and a right. Cool. All right. Hopefully that helps uh, make sense. Um, useful thing, the uh, the modulo. Anytime you have a um, kind of like a series of expanding or series of, of rising numbers, uh, and you want to kind of get it to a, a repeating pattern, uh, modulo is a really nice way to do that. Um, and then yeah, just making sure we're using the local values uh, for our alignments or our system values for alignments and uh, and our offset here. Um, and yeah just swapping the material and the offset uh, and we can get that to to work quite nicely okay as always big thanks to my patron supporters for supporting the channel um, if you want to learn more about game art tech art um, materials niagara all of that kind of cool stuff do check out my tutorials on gumroad and udemy um, if you have any questions any problems you have your yourself that you're struggling with uh, and you want to see if I can help you on the channel please do reach out and let me know um, and with that all said I will see you all next time